When families hear that their child has craniosynostosis, this can be very frightening. It's the first time that anyone may have ever heard of this diagnosis. But what we want families to know is that at Boston Children's Hospital, we treat patients from all over the world, and we have all the specialists that are needed for the care of the craniosynostosis patient. And for this reason, their care is safe, effective, and they can expect to have normal, full, and very rich lives. In terms of the treatment for craniosynostosis, there are several options. In younger infants, an endoscopic or minimally invasive approach can be utilized, and this can be done up to approximately four to five months of age. Infants who are slightly older require an open approach called a frontoorbital advancement or a calvarial vault remodeling procedure. The procedures performed for craniosynostosis are very complex, and they require a large team in the operating room that includes neurosurgery and plastic surgery. One of the things that we do at Boston Children's Hospital is called virtual surgical planning. This is actually performing the surgical procedure on the computer prior to the actual procedure in the operating room. We use the patient's CT scan and actually make the cuts on the CT scan and make the bony movements prior to the procedure so that when we're in the operating room, we've actually rehearsed the procedure before. And in fact, we can even make cutting guides and patient-specific plates to make the procedure much more precise and safer for the patient. A frontoorbital advancement procedure is one of the procedures used to treat craniosynostosis. And in that procedure, cuts are made in the bone here, this is called the frontal bone, and just above the eyes, this is called the frontoorbital bandeau. And these two segments are moved forward to expand the cranial volume in the patient with craniosynostosis. In terms of the long-term treatment plan for craniosynostosis, that can vary. So some patients who have what we call isolated craniosynostosis would have their procedure in the first year of life. We would follow them every year until they were six or seven years of age and then discharge them from care. There are other patients who have other types of craniosynostosis that we would see into adulthood because some of these syndromic craniosynostoses can affect mid-face growth, dental occlusion, and airway issues. One of the benefits of coming to Boston Children's Hospital for craniofacial care is that we have a large multidisciplinary team. We have all the specialties required for craniofacial care. Plastic surgery, neurosurgery, dentistry, otolaryngology, genetics, ophthalmology, and many more. And so because of the multidisciplinary team that we have, we can address all of the issues that craniofacial patients have. In terms of the follow-up, we generally see patients every year, and families don't need to worry about who they have to see. The benefit of having a large multidisciplinary team that's coordinated is that we take care of all the scheduling and who they need to see at what point in their development.